What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we got the engine bay completely painted and set. Uh, looks great, turned out awesome. And with that, I'll be able to install all the front suspension. As you can see, I have a floor just full of parts to go on this car. Um, all new suspension components, in including a full disc brake conversion, power disc brake conversion. So let's get started. You can see right here I went ahead and installed some 90 degree grease fittings for the upper control arm bushings. Uh, without these, the ones that they come with are just straight and you'll never be able to grease those. Um, there was even a time that people back in the day would drill a hole through the shock tower just to get to pet these to grease them. And we're not going to be doing that, uh, um, so we resolved that with just some 90 degree uh, Zerk fittings. Very easily available. I think I got these at National Parts Depot. All right guys, so you may have noticed I installed these upper control arms without putting any shims uh, on the studs. Uh, I did that because when I take it in to get aligned, uh, that's when they're gonna add these in. Uh, to adjust the camber, you would add an even number of shims, so the exact same size of both the front and back stud of the control arm. And then guys, your caster is adjusted by putting a different amount of shims either in the front stud of the upper control arm or the back stud of the upper control arm. And this would either push uh, your tire forward or backward. All right guys, notice I did not yet torque down the bolt on that lower control arm. Uh, that way I can still move it around. And also it has to be torqued uh, once the weight of the car is on it and that way you'll get the proper range of motion. So don't torque that bolt until it's all assembled and then you have the weight of the car on it. installed as well as the wheel spindle and the struts uh, we don't have the lower control arm torqued down yet we won't until it's on the riding on the weight of the suspension uh, so right now we are going to compress the spring with my spring compressor tool and install it into the shock tower all right guys as you can see i have the top insulator installed on the top of the spring on the spring saddle you'll notice this little tab sticking up right here that's where you want the end of the spring to meet when installing it. That right there. I don't know if you can see through there, see how it's just making contact with the tab. That's exactly the orientation that you want it in. All right guys, now that we have the spring in place, I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the lower control arm. Uh, that's gonna push up the saddle and compress the spring and we'll be able to remove the spring compressor and then place the shock back in bolt the shock up and then we'll be able to let the jack out so let's grab the jack set of these one piece uh, polyurethane bushings that'll go on the bottom of the, the shock. They'll last a lot longer than the rubber and fit a little better as well. We're going to drop the shock down through the top, get the bottom bolted up first, and then we'll um, get to the top to bolt in the top of the shock. All right, in the bottom, we're gonna have these two polyurethane uh, bushings, followed by this large washer and a nut.
right guys, so now that uh, the spring's installed and the shock as well, we go ahead and continue with the front uh, power disc conversion kit. Uh, we're gonna go ahead with the caliper brackets first, and then I believe uh, the dust shield's gonna go on, uh, followed by our rotors and the caliper bracket. We have four bolts that are gonna secure it, both the dust shield and the caliper brackets. Uh, one is longer, three of the other same size, uh, has some nylon locking nuts at the end. A longer one goes through kind of the back side of the spindle where the tie rod connects to. the bearings packed with grease for the rotor. I uh, got some grease on the spindle as well as on the inner races of the rotor. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop in that new bearing, put the seal on, and then we'll put it onto the spindle. Spinning the rotor, I'm gonna go ahead and torque it to 20 foot pounds. I'm gonna back it off a half a turn, and while spinning again, I'm gonna torque it to 10 foot pounds. That's our 20. I'm gonna back it off a half a turn. Ten. There we are. And then lastly, we'll finish it off with powder pen. the dust cap, which are always a blast to pound on. Gotta make sure it drives in nice and square. Shut up and sit down. All right guys, I already have the pads loaded up in the caliper. They are greased up, ready to go. Just two bolts that hold them in place. Looks like we're having an issue of clearance here on the dust shield. Let's take a look. I don't know if you can see that, but it's hitting right there in the dust shield. Not letting me get that second bolt in. Uh, yeah, it's gotta move quite a bit. So I think we'll just bend the dust shield out a little bit to clear it, rather than cutting it. Let's give that a try. All right guys, as you can see, I bent out the bottom of the dust shield out just slightly so the caliper has more clearance and it can bolt up to our bracket. If anything, this is gonna be a little scoop to cool down the brakes, right? A little performance upgrade there for free. Now we have loads of clearance. We'll go ahead and torque these bolts down to 65 foot-pounds. And 
and we'll be good to go. Alrighty guys, as you can see, we got everything installed down to the calipers and the rotors and the brake pads, strut rod, everything's good to go. Just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And then we'll get a drop down on the wheels. All right guys, uh, last time we go ahead and install the sway bar. This is a one inch sway bar kit. Uh, I'm gonna start with the, the body mounts and then move on to the end links. Guys, that is a wrap for the installation of the front suspension. I went ahead and set it down on the front tires and torqued down those lower control arms, so it is 100% done and ready to drive. Almost. Uh, next video, we're going to be dropping in the engine and getting closer and closer to driving this thing. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, share it with your friends and family, and we'll catch you next time.